I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the founder of the church I served as a bishop. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Many others have made a similar journey into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about, people who want to share their story. So if you're a Latter-day Saint seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you joining us. And I'm really excited to have you meet Mark Lobman, who's come down from Canada. I really appreciate you making this trip, and it's good to see you and meet you. And Well, thank you for having me. Thanks for coming down. And he has a wonderful story, and uh, so let's get into it. Where were you born? Edmonton, Alberta, oh, Canada. So you're, yeah. you're right there in hometown, and then you, that's where you live now, right? Yeah, yeah back there, I uh, parachuted out to, uh, <laughs> to Ontario, where I... Uh, I was uh, in, uh, well, had met my ex ex-wife now. <laughs> in, in, in Ontario? In, no, I met her in, at the Institute uh, of Religion uh, oh. when I was going to school for yeah. taking law enforcement oh, okay. in, uh, in Edmonton. Okay. And then she's from St. Catharines, Ontario. Oh. And then I uh, proceeded to, uh, well, there was no work in my field because all the baby boomers had the work. So, <laughs> and the, and Ontario you had came a... came along after, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Gen Xer. <Yeah. laughs> and, uh, and anyhow, uh, so I, I went back out to Ontario. We got married and went out mm -hmm. to Ontario. We were married in the Washington, D.C. temple. Oh, yeah, that was quite a trip. Yeah. Well, backing up just a little bit, you were not a member of the church originally. I mean, you weren't born in the church, right? No, no. Actually, uh, my parents divorced when I was about seven, and then your dad was my, he a Catholic? Or, um, or you I mentioned your mom was Catholic. My mom I think. was Catholic. I went your, to a Catholic elementary school. And what then was your late, dad? Was he... I don't know if he. I think he was raised Presbyterian. Oh. Then, uh, but that's quite common in the LDS churches where they 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 take people out of the the Christian faith. Of some sort, right? Who, who, who did the Mormon that? Church? Says, right. Hey, but that's who, who did that? Your dad? I don't know. One, uh, somebody. I think he was living in someone's basement to, that was LDS, and then because uh, I was too young, right? Oh, so I right. didn't really know one. And then uh, I started. By the time I got into my early teens, I started getting into sports and things like that. And then by the time I was fifteen, I joined the church, and oh. it was the girls and the sports that. <laughs> That got you intrigued. Yeah. <laughs> now was your the dad. The dances like we. Was sing. your dad a member by then? Yeah, he was. Yeah. Oh, okay. And so. So he converted. And at that time, I think there was about four stakes. They just got a fifth stake in Edmonton, so it's, it's not a huge growth, but Edmonton has just over a million people in its population. So. Oh. So the church isn't huge. Yeah. In comparison to it, but, it's still enough there. Yeah. And so. And now, were, were you taking seminary? Did you ever take? Oh, I took seminary. I was in. In I high school? All, all, yeah. Uh, well, our high school, different parts of Canada, it can be grade nine, like in Ontario is high school. Okay. But in Alberta, well, different parts of Alberta, too. It's just, yeah. it's a little confusing, but, but uh, 10, 11, 12 is high school. So I took the three years of, uh, three years of seminary. Oh. Yeah. And, um, and then I was a competitive swimmer, so I'd go to swimming and then seminary. I was very devoted to it. Wow. And then I went on a, a, a uh, uh, well, that time was a year and a half, but I uh, on a mission. Oh yeah, it was. They changed it a year and a half. Where'd you go? Michigan, the Lansing Mission. Oh, There's two was, missions. How there. was that? Uh, that was. Um, I I found it was almost like the Bible Belt area, but it isn't Bible Belt. But uh, really, yeah, it a lot of a lot of Baptists and, and things like that. So. Um, there's a lot of segregation of uh, whites and blacks in that area. Lansing. Yeah. Well, the whole uh, the whole mission area, like there was an area, like I was not used to that in Canada too much. Oh. Well, I wasn't growing up. Segregation. Yeah, maybe? segregation. Yeah. But in and um, and so uh, not to say we don't have our problems in Canada, but that's yeah. not one of them. <laughs> and so um, anyhow, uh, uh, what I did is I. Uh, we had two. One city was uh, St. Joseph's, Michigan, and the other across the river was 
uh, Benton Harbor. And that was all the black pop population and the other side was the whites. Oh. It's very, very, as you get eastward, I believe, it's probably more in that Now, was this before 1978, the no, church change? I, it was after? It was after. I went from 84 to 86. Mm -hmm. It was like I went for, I extended it to 20 months and then I had to go, I was going to school to take law enforcement. Oh, okay. So, and... Uh, oh, interesting. So did you feel like... Just to kind of ex talk about this for a second, but as a missionary, and you maybe weren't grown up in the church, but you took seminary, and you, did you feel like you had a testimony of Joseph Smith? Um, well, you bore your testimony I, certainly. I drank the Kool Aid, if you will, <laughs> like, because I think it's because all my friends and that stuff were, you know, everyone just was getting ready for going on missions and that stuff, and that was my social life. Well, at least, you know. I didn't drink and I didn't smoke and I, right. you know, and I, I, I didn't do those kind you were of things. Doing right? what the church expected. Yeah, of yeah. And, yeah, and so, I think the more troubles that came into my life was uh, upon marriage. Like uh -huh. I had actually a pretty happy, uh, you know, upbringing. Uh, in the church, you mean? In the church, yeah. yeah. And then uh, your mission and everything. Yeah, it was. It wasn't so bad. I didn't think. I mean, I remember one time uh, my companion and I were knocking on a door. And uh, this is what the United States is like, because it's not, <laughs> not, a, not common in Canada. And knocks on the door, and the guy said, the guy was in his underwear. He said, do you have any use for a naked man? And said, we said, no. And he comes back with a shotgun. And, <laughs> and he chases and you, and down you the moved along. Yeah, we ran down the driveway. So, so anyhow, uh, but, uh, you know, that was kind of a culture shock to yeah. me, <laughs> being 19 years old. But. Welcome to the United States. <laughs> yeah, huh? that's right. Well, so did you feel like you were, I know we talk about this a little bit, but do you feel like you were preaching Jesus or were you teaching the church? I was. Joseph Smith or, or It what? didn't really dawn on me. I think what I was doing is I was, I what I didn't like, and back then you had to uh, um, convince people that were believed in uh, Jesus. So that took up a lot of time. <laughs> and then well, you told and then, the Joseph Smith story, I guess. Yeah, and then that came after you got, that was kind of the getting them into the door thing. But there was a lot of people where we got in, like uh, I got into one house where they, uh, it was really, it was cold, it was a wintry night, uh, a lot of snow and really cold, and they took our shoes and our coats and hid them. And uh, it turns out... Uh, the the lady's husband was a pastor or minister of some church or whatever i didn't i don't remember and anyhow they uh they started you know once once we got to the joseph smith story then that's when they all started you know just attacking us and they took uh, temple clothing and garments and threw it in their fireplace and burned it and things like really? that oh. and so i didn't know what to expect no so it was very uh and then my uh, I didn't understand the dusting of the feet thing. I know it's biblical, but uh, oh. and who knows how you're deceived by by Satan as well, right? Right. And uh, and so my companion said, oh, "I saw a straw broom over black shoes dusting," and then and I didn't know. So we, so you know, you're automatically have to go to your priesthood leadership. So you call your mission president and say, and then he said. I'll take care of it, you know, don't, don't do anything or whatever. So, well, you know, uh, but, um, those, <laughs> those things, you just don't know how you're deceived in that, yeah. you know, and then later on in life, uh, I, uh, went to Ontario after, you know, after your mission. Yeah. Well, no, I came back home and I met my ex-wife in, in, uh, a single adult activity oh. and, uh, she was in Edmonton. And she was taking hairstyling, but living with her uh, sister. And had she been Mormon all her life? Yeah, she was born and raised. Born and raised. But, so you went all the way to D.C. to be to be married. Well, we were, went to Ontario, but we were, oh. got married in in D.C. because we there wasn't a Toronto Temple then. They came okay. in a few years later. Okay. But and then, uh, but um, yeah, and then uh, oh, I know what, when we were talking about uh, my. Uh, former father-in-law knowing yeah, tell Thomas him, Monson. Tell everybody about that. <laughs> it, it's, he was, um, well, when he, when Thomas Monson and his wife were uh, uh, mission president in the area in Quebec and Ontario back in the 50s and 60s, yeah. the, the church is small in, in Ontario. So the, and I think he was a bishop at that time, but he became a sealer in the temple 
by the time mm -hmm. I came along and married to my oh, okay. his daughter. Okay. So so therefore he would always come. Uh, Thomas Watson would come as a, in the first presidency. When he was in the first presidency. Yeah, okay. and he would come, and then we'd have dinner and that stuff. But I, I don't like, take any pride in that anymore. <laughs> I can but tell you, you that. You much. did at the time. All yeah, that. of course. I mean, yeah. It's because part of the church is just to rub shoulders, right, sure. with people, right? So, but um, did you have conversations, or did they talk about stuff? And did you? Yeah. Well, you know, just have a little. His Just job more old, chit chat. Yeah, it was more chit chat. Okay. Yeah, and he did have a security detail, but a lot of it was uh, local as well. Okay. The local police, that the, stuff. That, that members was, of the church. Yeah. Yeah. Volunteers. And yeah, stuff they would come were... in. Yeah. Oh. So. Um, so you get married and in the temple, and how was that experience? Of course, you've been through. Well, I went when through the Carson Temple, and I went through, and then on my mission, I went through here as well in Salt Lake. Through Salt Lake, okay. Yeah, before I went into the MTC in Provo. Okay. And um, and so, uh, yeah, the, I guess it, it was kind of, see, it's it was interesting because it was exciting too, right? And so, and uh, I had, um, we had taken a class called, I don't know if they do it anymore, but it's called an ambassadorship class. Hmm. And... Uh, uh, I like to laugh a lot, and they play the "Who's on First with Abbott and Costello." Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, because it's a it it teaches like a miscommunication, right? Yeah. You know, and and so I I ended up, uh, um, uh, you know, enjoying that class. But uh, um, it's basically, I think, what the and for what I remember of it so long ago now, but it was basically just get you in the door and out, and get you the. It's just basic stuff right unless you're this going ambassador on. thing you mean or? well the I'm whole sorry. mtc it's just oh, in, okay. in and out in and out right, okay, right. It's a, so, well especially when you're going through an english speaking yeah if you're area. foreign language then right. it takes a little, a little longer. longer but um uh after that then I, w I was married and uh and then pursued my career in law enforcement in toronto now and, you're active in the church at this yeah, point and yeah you're holding callings and everything i mean you just um, Being active, yeah, it was well everything um, from uh, it, um, in uh, leadership in uh, in Guelph, Ontario, in uh, you know young men's presidency to into the bishopric to um, hmm. uh, sometimes there were like state callings, but they yeah. it wasn't a high priest or whatever. But I, it was usually it. in the uh, in the young men's. Uh, yeah. end of things. And then your kids are active. You raise your children. Yeah, they were, but. Uh, it was a uh, very messed up. <laughs> I don't want to go into too much detail because people can, but it was very messed up. In um, in in uh, my my ex wife had uh, uh, like I was very devoted to the the church because I didn't think there was anything else out of sure. right, and uh, she had a lot of issues with um, I think whatever happened in her family growing up. There was a lot of psychological issues and that stuff because they have to keep this image. And that affected her testimony? Well, it church. affected her in a lot of areas. Oh, yeah. Like, I mean, and so, I mean, she did have a, towards the end of our um, marriage there, she she had a lesbian affair. And oh, then yeah. <laughs> uh, I guess that didn't work out too well for the church. So she ended up... Uh, uh, leaving me for my oldest son's friend's dad. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> so, so, you know, and a lot of things, um, uh, then a lot of things got, uh, uh, taken like, like the, like when Sean McCraney had said before, like, you know, what they do is they circle the wagons to protect their young yeah, and to protect the young people in the church so they can have Mormon children right, and, right. and go on missions and the whole bit. And, um, and so I was fighting with a lawyer two ends of it. Like I was, I couldn't, and I had to try to get access to my children. And uh, I, I was legally allowed it, Yeah. but there was no way. And so I haven't had uh, any full communication with all my four children. I have three boys and a girl. Oh. The youngest is a girl. They go well, that's 27 bad. down, down to 22, I guess. Oh. Are they still good members of the church uh, generally? To what I understand, they are, yeah. Oh. And, um, but... Well, so tell us what happens to you. <laughs> How did I come out? Yeah, yeah, tell us. You well, mentioned Sean McCraney and well, whatever uh, an else happened. an ex-girlfriend of mine in Ontario, or sorry, in 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 Edmonton, Alberta, um, she called me up and I was, uh, I was about to, um, 
assistant conducting a meeting because uh, they didn't have the other counselors there and I was going to conduct that meeting. They asked me to. And then she calls me up on my cell. This is 2013, I believe. And she says, I need to talk to you. So, <laughs> okay, well, I'll see you after church, right? And at this point, I'm single. and and but, so, but still active and still believing yeah, the church is yeah, true. Uh, and, yeah, I believed it. Yeah. And uh, anyhow, uh, she started showing me, uh, showing my cranies and your stuff oh, as well. Really? <laughs> yeah. And and I and I started, I the Holy Spirit took over, and she had taken me to a Pentecostal church. Now, um, it's kind of more a softer Pentecostal up there than they would you would think down here. I'm finding that yeah. out. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's not. It's not like interpreting in tongues and all that stuff. I I found. I found out how Americans think differently of, of a it. Pentecostal. So it's more Baptist, yeah, with a Pentecostal title. Okay, right. So she it, took you there, though. Yeah, and she had gone there, but she, and then she just left Jesus altogether. So, but it's how oh. the Lord works, right? Yeah. And so, and so, uh, I went in there, and the first time I I got into the church and. I heard this praise and worship music. I said, if I want to go to a concert, I'll buy a ticket. Right? <laughs> so, you know, because you're not used to that kind of stuff, no, right? Not as not as LDS. We no. We're used to the words up there and the music. And, yeah. yeah. And so, uh, oh, they do put project it on the screen, sure, on, on the sure. screen. But it was just, I wasn't. So I started going to Friday night prayer nights. And uh, she just dumped me off. I felt like, you know, I, I you know, dumped off a daycare, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and but the Holy Spirit just took over and took over and took over, and then what I started. Did you, what were you learning? What did you hear? Well, what did you hear differently than that you were? Well, had first heard of all, in, the Holy Spirit was through the, through the praise and worship music was starting to get to me. Yeah, and then I just felt the Spirit just just go through me. But then when I started watching Sean stuff, I I started uh, and seeing testimonies from this show too. Yeah, I started spitting bullets. And I just thought, you know, this, this is stuff. I've this is heard. a lie. I've been lied to that, you know, and so I didn't believe. Did you start studying and looking at stuff to well, challenge Sean or the guests? Oh, I did. Whatever? I started reading and reading and reading and, and, uh, and, 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 but Sean had, once I started getting into more and more about the biblical uh, Mormonism meets uh, yeah. biblical Christianity, yeah. that's when I, <clears throat> I started to gain a testimony, and it got stronger and stronger. And then I just followed his show all the time, hmm. and along with your people who give their testimonies here. And so that's when uh, I just I, I started feeling uh, the Holy Spirit, and now I'm just stronger in the Lord now. It's been three years. I've been uh, uh, a bapti uh, baptized in 2014, wow. July 2014. So praise God. And, and so uh, <laughs> we're yeah. So that it's well, just... what do you suggest to a, a member who might be listening now and is we don't really talk a lot of deep doctrine here we're just listening yeah. to, to person's personal story but what do you what would you suggest to a Mormon who might want to be um, do a little more research where would they go what should they look at well first of all they have to get uh, holy the Holy Spirit in them or else it's just it's just words they're just yeah right it's just book yeah because if you and you have to get that 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 spirit of that that blankness off of you right because there's just, and and once the lord gets into your spirit and uh you, you can use the spirit the to, holy spirit will teach, start yeah. teaching yeah. through you right because we don't need brick and mortar to yeah. have temples we right. don't need to wear uh, the the underwear to <laughs> To, 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 to protect God us, to please God. God, yeah. And so those type of things are, are um, people need to understand that. It, and then it's and it's the same thing because Paul talked about precept upon precept. It's not a Joseph Smith thing. No. <laughs> you know, no, he just stole a lot of stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so anyhow, um, it, and it is precept upon precept. And so if a person is coming into it, and, uh, I would suggest that they get on their knees or lay in their bed or wherever they want, just in a private place in their own prayer closet. And just, just they have to get the Holy Spirit in them first, and then the Holy Spirit teaches. And that's what mm -hmm. happened with me. Wow. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't suggest just reading because... The Bible, you mean? You well, mean? No, no, just reading for sake oh, of uh, reading okay. it, right? I'm just saying you got to get into it. What I do is different. I like the way Sean's doing because he breaks things up. And he does verse he, by verse. Yeah, and he does. Um, he, he does. 
um, you know, he pulls it out and then he teaches and that stuff. Now, a lot of people like that. Maybe yeah. some people just like the whole menu. I don't yeah. know. Well, I, li- I like the verse by verse yeah. kind of study, and I've, I've seen that That's in a lot, of different, a lot of different churches do that, which is, I'm really grateful for yeah. that. Did you uh, um, well, now, read other things too, though? That well, yeah, because now I'm working on a online theology degree. Oh, are you? Yeah. Oh, and, so, you. and so I'm, I don't want to, I'm not changing careers or anything, but uh, the, the well, point. Uh, the to point, learn more and more. Uh, yeah, and it, what it is is it just teaches me there's just not just yeah. Sean's way or whatever. Right. It, what it is is it's there's a, an open there. I do like what I've done on a regular daily basis is I like uh, Dr. Charles Stanley, and so I listen to his uh, program. I do too. And um, and I know that's how. And you learn a lot. From, you you're yeah. yourself. You came. You learned a lot, and Sean has as right. well. Yeah. And so. Um, well, and, what did you, what do you think now about Jesus compared to Mormonism? I know they, Mormons well, say I they're wanted, Christians. But... I did want to bring that up because when I was in um, Sherwood Park in in uh, in Alberta, it's in Edmonton, around Edmonton, and it's one of the churches there. Um, and uh, I was teaching when they were just maybe three or four years ago, they were, or four years ago now. I think they just switched over to the having the young men at 18 and the girls at 19. Oh, the mission, right? uh, mission calls. on missions. Yeah. 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 And so I was teaching this young class. Uh, and of, I re- of young Mormons, uh, you mean? Yeah, young, yeah. The seven, 16 or 17 to 18 missionary prep class or something yeah it was a sunday school but it was also and they had the curriculum was to teach by the spirit okay and you know some of their videos because you'd have it online on your tablet and you'd show their little propaganda stuff (laughs) (laughs) it was their propaganda videos and then it was teach by the spirit i think they ran out of ideas as well (laughs) so so it was on the atonement the whole month and so uh, in this particular month of april right and uh, I re- started running out of ideas, and one day, I, I guess by the grace of God, I flipped on the TV, and there was Dr. David Jeremiah. Oh. And I never watched this stuff because it just didn't yeah. mean nothing to me. Right. Usually it was in church or something, but sure. church had been for an afternoon, <laughs> right, because we changed. And so I flip it on. And he looked like a general authority. Yeah, he does. Right? Yeah. So he's got the white hair. He's got tie. the suit tie and his mannerisms are right. And so, because if he was jumping around and screaming, I would never have gone for it. Right? right. So, so uh, anyhow, uh, so, so I, I was, he said, he said, if when you die, like I was actually teaching the gospel you of Jesus me. Christ yeah. to these kids. Yeah. And then what happened was these kids other kids were leaving their other classes and filling up the hallways because they got word of this because they're boring classes. <laughs> you know, they were, so they were coming to listen they to listened yours. To, and I, I was getting in trouble from the, <laughs> from the bishop and all that, right? And so <laughs> I was being a rebel, I guess. I don't know. But I was actually teaching the Word of God right inside the Mormon church. So you took some of the stuff that David Jeremiah... I was used? writing it all down because it was just... Like, and, and, I, and he had and said... And did it make sense? Well, yeah, it just I mean, made, it's not Mormon. But. Well, it made a lot of sense because I did, I always believed that Jesus Christ was my savior, not the I didn't really buy into this uh, you know, this spirit this stuff in spirit world stuff beforehand and everything. I did uh, it just didn't make sense to me a lot. Yeah. And so, but I didn't know the truth either. Right. And so I just thought it was, right? And so because a lot of stuff like when we were mentioning earlier about polygamy, I just I never bought into that. And so well, I didn't know that I understood it, but I figured I was going to live it someday. But. Yeah, I just didn't buy into it. It yeah. just didn't make sense to me. I used to scratch my head, and they would say, "Well, just ask a temple president." Well, my former father-in-law, this is in Toronto, he he wouldn't answer, and he was a sealer, and, and so he said no. and and then and so um, I go to the temple president. And he said, "Well, this is this is an eternal matter, so God will sort it out later." And <laughs> and so it was always deflecting, deflecting, deflecting. Right. Well, with David Jeremiah, I got strict answers right away. I didn't even know it was all biblical. Uh-huh. I had no idea. Yeah. But um, anyhow, so um, I passed this stuff on. I started writing everything. I'm teaching these kids. Well, each it was a whole month of April of that year, yeah. 2013, was all on David Jeremiah's. <laughs> <laughs> so so I, I, uh, I ended up... Um, Getting, uh, well, they, they said you, the bishop came to audit the class, right? And so the la- on the 
it happened to be right on Easter Sunday was church as well. It landed on that same right. same day, and so uh, um, well, and so I ended up uh, um, asking the kids what David Jeremiah said. He said, "If you go, go die and go to heaven, who are you going to thank first? I hope it's Jesus Christ." Now I still understand some separate individuals at that point, yeah. right? But um, uh, but. Uh, I ended up uh, um, asking them this question. They said, and he said, I hope it's Jesus Christ. And I said, well, and when the bishop's son had said, right with the bishop there, odd in the class, he says, oh, I want to get my own planet. And I went, <laughs> I went, what? Like, what are you talking about? Like, the, <laughs> I didn't even know that. Ex I heard it as mythology, but I didn't, didn't know. Think we could go See, I don't know how it goes down here, but up there, thing. Once you get away you don't from the it. waves of the shock waves of, you, you of Mormonism, much, they yeah. don't talk about it much, yeah. right? And so, now, uh, I'm sorry, you had yeah. a born again. We've only got a couple of minutes oh, left, I, believe it or not. Okay, uh, you had a born again experience, and could you share that real quickly? In 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 which one I've had? A oh, few. you've had several. <laughs> yeah. oh. Well, you just mentioned that you'd, and I think it's important. I think people like to hear about this moment that you finally came to the, to understand God and who He was. Well, and, where I really came to understand Him was, was um, with a pastor who's who's Max Albrecht and who is kind of like the Billy Graham of Canada. Yeah. And uh, but he's eighty. He's eighty five now. But he went all over doing like filled up stadiums all over the world. Not as much in the United States, but yeah. he was in that same category as Billy Graham. And I went to uh, one of his tent meetings, and I got he just prayed over me, and and I got just filled with the Holy Spirit, and I was healed of diabetes. It was just mm. the Lord's way of just saying, that, "Look, I'm real, right?" I'm and so, and I, I've, that's uh, been a year now. That was just a year. Yeah, like I've only been out three years. Three, right? but I wasn't. It wasn't like I wasn't didn't believe it, but I just didn't get it all at once. Yeah. Right. But that's when I got that holy Holy Spirit, and it just made a difference in how I approach wow. things and everything. Well, I know we're going to end up summarizing here, but I assume that grace and you understand oh, grace yes, and, yes. and the Bible and Jesus. Oh, yeah, and I'm yeah. proud of you for, for working on this degree because I think that it, anything, anytime we can get into the Bible and, yeah. and that kind of study, we end up learning more and more and it strength, strengthens what we're doing. Mark, thanks so much well, for coming you. down. You're a good man. I just want to let everybody attitude. know that, that Jesus is the Christ, though, that there's no other gods or anything. Thanks, <laughs> It's <John>. Jesus. Thanks, <laughs> Mark.